Virgin Media O2 unveiled the launch of their 5G standalone network back in February this year, 2024. With advantages proposed including reduced latency and increased throughput. However, crucially, how does it perform on a busy working Monday afternoon? So let's get testing. The first test location is by the Keys in Belfast, Northern Ireland. A busy urban location with a number of big businesses as well as road and rail connections. I'm currently by the Big Fish statue and the test device is actually currently on standalone 5G. I have started a testing script here with us on N78 with 40 megahertz of bandwidth. It's varying quite a lot depending on where exactly I stand because the site is up there on the building and therefore the signal conditions vary quite a lot as I move about. The site does also have N28 standalone so if I select just N28 there and then go back we have N28 standalone 5G as well. If I just test the performance there we're getting lower numbers because it's 10 megahertz paired versus 40 megahertz unpaired Spectrum wise in the 700 megahertz footprint will likely be a lot larger as well. Curiously, while my device supports NR carrier aggregation between 5G on band 28 and 78, I've only very rarely seen it on O2's standalone 5G deployment, both here in Belfast and in other places. In terms of speed test numbers, I've selected a server in Slough as they often perform quite well I've found and the device is on N78 standalone at the moment. We've got a latency of 35 milliseconds which for Northern Ireland is actually pretty good and the throughput's settled at about 70 megabits per second in the downlink direction. And then upload wise, we've got about 20 megabits per second. Out of curiosity, I have disabled standalone 5G capability on the device now so that we can see how non standalone 5G performs in this locality. With N78 as the NR layer, the device is using LTU1. 20 and 3 we're getting latency 31 milliseconds there and the throughput with 214 download and 56 55 megabits per second upload there so to summarize from the key area here standalone and non-standalone both provided quite nice latency with non-standalones download and upload performance being quite impressive and standalones certainly being acceptable as well. Now for a bit of a change of scene I've gone down an alleyway off one of the main shopping streets. The device is on non-standalone 5G here and the throughput we're getting is between about 70 and 140 megabits per second. With the device locked to standalone 5G, it's not able to attach and we're just really getting signaling. I continued my journey down to another shopping street and here the device is using non-standalone 5G to quite good performance. However, with non-standalone 5G disabled and the device locked to standalone 5G, it is actually connected to standalone 700 MHz 5G. Throughput wise, it is rather struggling, however, with single digit downlink performance. Latency wise, the 700 MHz standalone here, average 48 milliseconds. Whereas with non-standalone 5G with 
the M78, we're getting about 52. In this location, we're very close to an O2 site which has standalone 5G capability. The site, in fact, actually being on the roof up there, roughly behind me. So I'm expecting quite good numbers here. Unsurprisingly, with the device set to not be locked, it is on standalone 5G. If I start the performance test, we're getting very nice throughputs. So we just had a peak of about 260 there in the download area. I'm also expecting quite good performance from speed test. So 44 millisecond latency and our download performance there about 130 Let's settle that with an upload of 27 megabits per second. With standalone disabled the throughputs quite impressive there over 200 megabits per second and latency is 43 looks like it's actually going to hit over 300 megabits per second here so 323 download in fact scrolling through i saw a downlink saturated throughput peak at 379 megabits per second or 379.2 quite noticeable is how much of the total downlink throughput is provided by the LTE component, the 4G component. So I'm now at City Hall and the device not locked to standalone or non-standalone is on 4G without any 5G connectivity at the moment. Performance wise it's very acceptable though. Locked to 5G standalone only, the device has gone on to 700 megahertz and throughput wise. Interestingly I have got NR carry aggregation and walking around the city hall with the peak throughput varying absolutely wildly with numbers between about single digits and into triple digits. Latency wise the standalone 5G has done reasonably here. Although 4G latency is also quite reasonable. Our final test area is in very good signal conditions with the site once again behind me and the sector facing pretty much at me. So expecting good numbers here. Non-standalone 5G, we've got N78 and then LTE bands 8, 1 and 3 with throughput of nicely over 300 heading towards 400 megabits per second there, in fact over 400 megabits. And then a speed test, latency 42, throughputs near two to 300 megabit per second, or even over 300 megabits per second. And our blade performance there, absolutely excellent, about 80 megabits per second. Very reasonable. Browsing through NSG, the download peak I've seen is 423 megabits per second. Locked to standalone only, we've got carrier aggregation on between the NR carriers with throughputs around 130 to about 200 megabits per second there. The standalone performance on the speed test app has been fairly variable here. Latency is around 50 milliseconds and the, the throughput between about 100 and just over 200 megabits per second. Upload wise, it's been doing about 30, it's about 34, 35. Thanks for watching this video about my testing of O2 standalone 5G in Belfast today. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope to see you on the next one.